everybody for our very next Take Home Science Kit. My name's Sean. I'm the Executive Director here at the Hands-On Science Center. Today joining us is the Vice Chairman of our board, Austin Sisko. Hi everybody. All right. Today is a super exciting kit, Austin. You picked a good one to come because this is actually going to be really, really fun. This kit is all about paleontology. Paleontology? Isn't that... that's dinosaurs. We're going to learn about dinosaurs? We might touch on dinosaurs very briefly, but actually paleontology is a very broad science that actually covers all kinds of different things, and we are going to be learning about that today. Cool. All right, so very first thing, you want to grab your kit here, and let's see what we got in it. So first is our very important booklet that we provided you. This has some really great information in it. We'll be talking about that in a second. And you got this little paper here that says why I could be a paleontologist. Hold on to that. We're going to use that at the end. And in this kit, oh, look at that. We went fancy with this one. We actually have this uh, dino fossil dig kit. We're going to be talking about that. That looks like a lot of fun. It is going to be fun. This is, like I said, this is a, this is a neat kit. And then we got a pencil here and a little box of crayons. It's a tiny box of crowns. It is, but we'll use them. All right, everybody, grab your book. And I want everybody, first thing right now, turn to this very first white page. This one's actually important. This is actually your quiz. Oh. It's okay. It's a fun, easy, quick quiz. And it's actually really important to us. Um, we want to see what you know at the beginning. So what do you think they should do if they don't know an answer? Well, uh, you can say, I don't know. You're about to learn about it, so maybe just wait until the end. Yeah, that's exactly the point, because guess what? There's a little quiz right here, and then if you go right towards the back of the book, right there, it's the exact same quiz. So what we want to do is find out what you know first, and then find out what you learn. And Austin, what we're doing now, we're actually asking people if you can get your parents to take a little picture of the first page, the first time you did the test, and the second time you did the test, and actually send it to us via email or even a Facebook Messenger. We actually use those to determine if our programs are working, if they're teaching people. We can use those numbers when we apply for grants and stuff like that. So actually a really important part of the book. Cool. All right, so let's move right on in. You know, what is paleontology? But before I do that, I'm going to stop you. Because right now, uh-oh, you thought I forgot. You guys need to hit pause right now and take that little pretest for us. So go ahead and hit pause. We'll see you in a second. All right, guys, welcome back. Hope you got your little uh, pre-quiz done there. So, Austin, what do you think of when you hear paleontology? What is paleontology? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is fossils. That's the first thing that comes to mind. But I know there's a little bit more to it than that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in, just in general terms, paleontology is really kind of, it's the scientific study of life that existed in the prehistoric times. Um, you know, all the way back uh, you know, 11,000 years ago, and then way beyond that is kind of the study of paleontology. It's the study of life and the planet and all kinds of things that happened during that time. Um, so actually the next header right here in our book is, is it all about dinosaurs and fossils? No. No. That's what you think of, right? Most people think of paleontologists, they think of Jurassic Park, they think of dinosaurs and digging for fossils, but there's actually a lot more involved. Um, so right, it says right here, no, there are all different types of paleontology, and paleontologists often focus on very different things. So we think about dinosaurs, we think about uh, a woolly mammoth, those types of paleontology are vertebrate paleontology. Hmm. So, what's a vertebrate? A vertebrate, uh, well, that's something with a backbone. Yeah, yeah, so the bigger animals. But um, there's actually, what about the little tiny things? Microorganisms and stuff like that. Hmm. Did you know there's actually paleontolo paleontologists that specialize in studying those? And that's a certain kind of paleontology called, guess what? Microorganism paleontology? Close, just micro paleontology, oh, make it okay. simpler. Um, so there's the microscopic organisms that people study. Um, let's see what else we talk about here. 
Um, what about plants? Do paleontologists ever study plants? I think they do. They're, I've seen big fossils of plants. Yeah. Um, and we're probably going to pop one here, up here right on the screen right now for you guys to see. But uh, paleontologists study these dinosaurs. He might not care about plants. A biolog or a paleontologist, paleontologist, I'm having trouble with that word today, who studies plants might not really care about the dinosaurs. So there's a whole separate field of paleontology called paleobotany. Wow. Yeah. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, <laughs> well, it even says some paleontologists specialize in just studying pollen. Right. So, Austin, I know you have a scientific background. Why do you think a paleontologist might want to study prehistoric pollen? Hmm. They, they might want to know what trees or plants uh, were in the ecosystem back then. It, exactly. I mean, that's that's kind of you know important, and we'll learn why some of these things are so important in just a bit. But um, what other types of paleontologists are there? Um, oh, this is a funny word: paleo polynologist. That's a person that studies the prehistoric pollen. So, there's some interesting words there. Um, you know, there's there's paleontologists that study insects. There's ones that focus on just ecosystems. Um, weather patterns, even studying prehistoric weather patterns are important. Uh, rock formations, all these different things are all different fields of paleontology. So like I said, it's a really, really broad field. Um, so let's turn our page here. Some famous paleontologists. We're just gonna talk about these guys real quick. You can look them up for more detail if you want. But um, go ahead and just read through there, those first couple. Um, one really cool woman, have you ever heard of Sue Hendrickson? I think so. Oh. Have you heard of uh, T, uh, the T-Rex named Sue? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, why don't you pick that up right over there, Austin. Sue Hendrickson actually discovered the most complete fossil of a T-Rex ever found. Wow. And it's actually on display. The, the real one is on display at the Field Museum in Chicago, so actually really cool. And let's see, does everybody get a good look at that there? I think it's a lot bigger than that though, Sean. Yeah, this is um, not quite an accurate representation of size. This, however, is a little better representation of size. Go ahead and hold that up there. This is an actual replica tooth of Sue. So you can see the comparison there. So really, really cool. And the neat thing is that most of the time when we discover dinosaurs, you think we find all the bones. We don't find them all. Yeah. Very few. I mean, we actually reconstruct dinosaurs with like 10 to 15 percent of the bones sometimes. Sue was the most complete one ever found. That's why it makes her really, really unique. Cool. All right. So I mentioned this before, but why is paleontology important? What do you think? Hmm. I think it, it, it helps us understand our past or, or the world's past. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, you know, what it says here. Not, not only does paleontology reveal the wonders of the past, it gives us important information into how and why things are and maybe happening the way they are today. Um, so, fossils provide evidence about the types of organisms that lived long ago and also about the nature of their environments. So let's let's brainstorm some ideas here. So uh, this tooth that we had. So if we are paleontologists, we discovered this tooth. What might we think? Well, we might think that there's more teeth around there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we might think that there's a big dinosaur underneath the ground. Yeah. So we dig up the dinosaur and discover it and has a whole bunch of teeth. Uh, what if, what a dinosaur eat that had a tooth like this? Oh, that looks like a meat eater. That's a carnivore. Yeah. It has really sharp teeth. Yeah, definitely. So just studying those fossils kind of gives us an idea about what kind of animals lived long ago. So if there's carnivores, there's probably herbivores for them to eat. Oh. So the relationships are really important. Then your next little header here is, said local and global patterns of rock formation reveal changes over time. So a lot of words there, but we'll talk about what that means. The presence 
and location of certain fossil types indicate the order in which the rock, rock layers were formed. Is that, is that kind of what the Grand Canyon's like? There's all those different layers in it? Yeah, you got all the different layers. And then, so if you're up at the top of the Grand Canyon and you found some fossils, you think there'll be the same fossils that you found down in the bottom of the Grand Canyon? Mm, probably not. That's a, that's a long time in between those, I think. Yeah, so, and then actually one really practical thing. So, what about oil companies or if you're drilling for oil, do you think they ever need to hire paleontologists? I actually knew somebody who did that. He yeah. went to school for being a paleontologist and started working for the oil company. Mm -hmm. So they can actually, by studying these different uh, formations and layers, you can actually learn the best places to drill for oil or other fossil fuels. So that's an actual practical use of paleontology to today. Cool. All right, so our next one is scientists record patterns of the weather across different times so they can make predictions about what kind of weather may happen next. So there's paleontologists that study the weather that happened millions of years ago. Hmm. And... How do they do that? There's no clouds in the sky when it... In the you know what? I bet those uh, ones that study pollen. Do you remember what those oh, are called? Oh, pollen... The yeah, something like that. Polynologists. Um, I bet if one year they, in a layer of rock they find a whole bunch of pollen, in another year they don't find as much. Hmm. That might tell us about the weather, right? Maybe it rains more one year yeah. and washed it away. Or even they can study things like insects that you know breed when it's uh, hotter and don't breed when it's colder and things like that. And then the really neat thing is they can apply that to today. Wow. Because they can determine, um, you know, the impact that the animals had on the environment millions of years ago and extrapolate that to today to determine the impact animals have on the planet today, including, you know, the impact humans are having. So they can actually compare the weather and make predictions. Wow, that's interesting. All right. So... You got a cute little picture of a mammoth here, and then what does it say? It says, time for discovery. What are I, think I think we're about to have some fun here. All right, so we are going to, I want you to grab your box, bring that out, um, and we will be back in just a second. So go ahead and pause if you want while you get your box together, and we'll see you in a sec. All right, welcome back. I uh, hope you got your kit. Now, you'll see it says here in the book, but we are now going to start our fossil dig kit. Now, what, I, what we want you to do is the first step, you're going to open up everything, um, take out your book, and read page one. This is very important instructions on how to set everything up. And then, um, be, you can read pages 2 to 11 if you want because it actually has a lot of cool information about fossils and dinosaurs and things. You can read that now, you can save it to read it later, however you want to do it. And then the really the awesomeness of science is the exploration, I think. Yeah, discovering new things, that's, that's always fun. Yeah. So what we're going to do now, Austin, a lot of our other kits, what we do is now we do the project step by step with the people at home. But guess what we're going to do today? Uh, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We are actually going to give you very little instruction at this point because you are now going to become a paleontologist. Oh, cool. Yeah, so what you're going to do is you're going to open up your kit, you're going to read that page one, and then you are going to make a discovery. Now, as you're uh, going through what they call a dig brick in here, as you're going through it and searching, uh, we want you to take notes. I think it says, let's see, uh, pages 12 and 13 in the little book that's included in here are blank pages. What we want you guys to do for this project is to record in that book um, different methods that helped you find or helped you dig in here, what might not have worked well. Huh. Um, because you know what? A being a scientist, being a paleontologist, it's a lot of fun, but it's also a job, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah. 
It's a lot of mess too. Yeah, so you might get messy, so make sure you read that first page and have your parents help you set up if you need to. But you're going to record some notes, and you're going to need those notes for our next project. But now, you guys are paleontologists. Go ahead and pause, and when you have made your amazing discovery, join us again. So, what did you guys learn? What did you find? Can you show us uh, on our Facebook page? That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, we hope you had fun discovering, you know, we won't say what you discover, um, but we hope you had fun discovering it. So next, we're going to go to this next page in the book, and it says, next, we want to try and answer a few questions. Use the space provided to write down your answers. Again, these are going to come in handy when we do the next project. So, we have a few examples here, but what kind of questions do you think a paleontologist would have to ask himself or answer for, the, for his bosses, the museums, or whatever, making a discovery? You know, first, very obvious one, what do you think it is? What is it? Perfect, yeah, what is your discovery? You've got to be able to identify it. So go ahead and write down there what you think you discovered. Um, now we want you all to pretend like you're a real paleontologist and you're out in the field and you just discovered what you discovered. You know, how would you feel? I'd feel really excited. Like I've been working a really long time to find something and I found it. Yeah, so I bet you there's lots of different answers. There's all different types of feelings people might have about this. So go ahead and jot down how you think you would feel. Now, I want you to ask, uh, do you want to be a paleontologist? I think I might after this. Yeah, okay. So then the question is, if so, what kind of paleontologist? Because we just uh, learned there's lots of different kinds, didn't we? I think I want to be a polynologist now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, didn't you say that was boring before? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, that yeah. sounds boring. The word's cool, though. Yeah, it is a cool word to say. Um, but again, obviously there's no right answer for this. You just kind of want to you know, think about things. The goal of this kit, I don't know if you caught on, the goal of this kit is really to try and get you to think. Uh -oh. Our other kits, we did a lot of you know, engineering, technical stuff. We did a lot of hands-on things. The goal here is to get you to think because that's actually a big part of science, asking questions, all right? So, second part of this question is, if you don't want to be a paleontologist, do you think you could be if you wanted to? So that's kind of a big question. I kind of, I don't want to give too many details because that question can actually mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And that's going to be important for our next project. Well, so you start thinking about it. Now. You keep talking about this next project. Let's get to it. Yeah, we're, we're almost there. Almost there. So, a um, couple more questions. Again, these are some examples of what a paleontologist might have to answer. Um, is your discovery, is it hard, is it soft, what color is it, is it light, is it heavy, um, how does it compare to other, like another rock, is it heavier, or lighter, so we really want you to kind of try and classify things, kind of determine all the different physical properties and all that kind of stuff, and then at the very last one is, again, we want you to use your head here, we want you to think of some more questions that you might need to answer if you're a paleontologist. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pause one more time while you go through those pages, answer those questions, and we will be back to talk about our final project. Finally. <laughs> All right, we are here again, and I know Austin is eager to get onto this final project. So that is going to be this page that you have right here called Why I Could Be a Paleontologist by You. So very first step, you're going to write your name. We'll go ahead and have Austin do it here. He's going to write his name right in there. All right, and then you'll see right below the name, there is a box. Um, and we got some crayons for you here. Now what we want you to do is think about all the different types of paleontology we just talked about. So there's ones that study insects and weather and dinosaurs and fossils. I want you to think about all the different things and then we want you to draw a picture in that box 
showing a type of paleontology you learn. So it doesn't need to be great. You can just kind of sketch whatever you want there. We're going to have Austin start on that while I finish talking and um, show us in a little bit. But you can do it, um, you know, a picture of a paleontologist. You can, you know, make it a picture of you being a paleontologist. You can do a picture of a fossil, a dinosaur, whatever you want. We want you guys to get creative here. And on Sunday, February 14th, that's the day after we release this kit, we're actually going to be doing a post on our Facebook called Hands on, or Hands on Science Center Take Home Science Show Us Sundays. And we are going to actually have your parents take a picture of this and post it on there, and you guys can actually win a prize. So we want you to think really hard. So while Austin draws his picture there, right below that you'll see some lines, and it says, I could become a paleontologist because I, and then we want you to fill out the rest of the sentence, or small paragraph even if you want. Now, the important thing is, the question doesn't ask if you want to be a paleontologist. It asks, do you think you could be if you wanted to be? Now again, that's that really big question I was talking about before that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So I'm not going to give you a whole lot of details about that, but we want to see what you guys come up with. Do you think you could be a paleontologist because you like this or are this or do this? Or I'm going to end it right there because we want to see what you guys come up with. All right, so speaking of coming up with, let's see what Austin came up with here. All right, so there's Austin's picture. He did the first part of it there. So it looks like he's representing paleobotany, right? That's right. All right, so we got some, uh, some leaf fossil pictures there, so very cool. All right, so Austin is going to go ahead and finish, finish out his sentence here in a little bit, uh, a little bit later. But again, you know, one more time. After you're all done with this, get your parents to take that picture. We want you guys to get a chance to win a prize. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know it's a little bit different than how we've done it in the past. Um, not a whole lot of direction because we want you guys to explore and discover for yourselves. Um, I want to thank Austin for taking his time coming here to learn with us. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I've yeah. had a lot of fun. Yeah. And I can't wait to see what everybody else finds in their kids. Yeah, that's that's the best part for us, is those show us Sundays. Um, one thing I do want to remind you, all these kits we're doing are 100% free. Um, we do our Facebook Science Daily posts, where we do fun facts every uh, five days a week on there. We got lots of other uh, HOSC virtual programs that are become, going to be coming up. We got a uh, Facebook Live program we do every other Thursday. All those are 100% free. So how do you think people can help us? What would be the best way to help us? Well, I think uh, if you have fun doing these kits and have fun learning about all these things during our science dailies and our science uh, our Facebook lives, tell your friends about it. I think that will help us out a lot. Uh, just let your friend know, hey, you might have some fun with this kit next time. So uh, just let them know about it and we're going to have some fun with you. Yeah, I mean, people don't realize the, the best way to help us is that word of mouth um, and Facebook you know these days whether you like it or not Facebook's pretty important share our posts like our posts because it actually makes them go viral and it gets the word out to lots and lots of people about these programs and if you of course if you can make a donation if you can go to our website it's www.hosc.org and there's a little uh, donate button up there that obviously comes in very handy but like I said just telling people getting the word out is the best thing. So I think uh, Austin's going to finish up his little program there. And on behalf of Austin and me and the rest of the Hands-On Science Center and Sue the T-Rex, we'll see you next time. You have a great day. Okay.